to be thinner. I want to be taller. My jaw to be squarer. My waist to be smaller. My skin to be blacker. Or if not that, whiter. I don't want to be wronger. I want to be righter. Whoops. I'm talking about myself. Craig Charles talking about himself. I want to be right when things are essential. I need the respect and to be influential. I want to be funny and taken real serious. I want to be calm. And I want to be furious. Whoops. I'm talking about myself. Craig Charles talking about himself. I wrote that poem to tell you some things about me. Describing something always means choosing and using words. And there are so many to choose from that it's sometimes quite easy to talk and talk and get carried away and not really say what you mean at all until in the end everyone else is confused as you are. It's up to us to choose which words to use. The more carefully you choose, the more accurate a picture you communicate to other people. A cat. What kind of cat? A big stripy cat. What, like my tiddles at home? No, no. A wild cat. A jungle cat. A tiger. Right. So what about it? What about what? What about this tiger, man? What do you mean? Well, what's it doing? Doing? Well, it's moving, isn't it? Moving? What, running rapidly? Sneaking slowly? Jumping joyously? Or doing the okie cokey No. It's... It's walking softly on its paws, looking out for danger. Ah, I see. Padding warily. <laughs> padding warily? So where is it doing this worry padding, then? Where? In the jungle. Where are bats? In the jungle. In the trees? By the stream? Among the leaves. What are the leaves like? Well, they're like leaves, aren't they? You know, green and that. Boring. Boring, mm. yeah. What do they look like, these, these leaves? Well, they're long and narrow and they, and they wave about. And they end in little points. What, like long green fingers with sharp nails? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suppose so. So the jungle cat's padding warily among long green sharp nail leaves. Oh, the tiger's walking in the jungle, isn't it? Oh, give up. When you're trying to describe something to someone, you'll find you're using two kinds of describing words. Words that describe things, they're called adjectives, and words describe actions. They're known as adverbs. So if, if I was, say, describing... Peter, our sound recordist, I could use adjectives to tell you what he looks like to me. Adjectives like... tall, slim, and tidy. And adverbs to tell you how he does things, like quickly, efficiently, quietly, in fact, if you're precise enough with the words you choose, you can describe things or people without ever having to name them at all. Ooh. What am I? I am very beautiful. I have feathers with eyes on. I can spread my feathers out behind me like a fan. I walk very gracefully. What am I? I'm big. And I'm round, and I've got own skin, and people like me in Halloween. What am I? I am a glass object which people have in their room. I can be oblong, or round, or any other shape. I also reflect people and any movements that they do. What am I? I'm big, I'm strong, I'm hairy. I love to swing from tree to tree. Humans evolved from my family. What am I? I'm quite small, I'm soft to the touch, but watch out, I have some sharp bits too. I have pointed ears and a, and a tail, and I like to chase things, but sometimes things chase me. What am I? You shuffle me carefully, deal me out evenly, play me craftily, 
Slap me down heavily and shout out loudly when you win. Come on, Snakey. Come on. Come on. Come on. If you were describing a snake, how would you do it? Like this. The snake is a long, limbless reptile that squeezes or bites its prey. Or like this. Hissing venomously, the savage snake strikes. Oops. Go on, get out of here. Get out of here. You see, each sentence tells us something about the snake. This one makes me see the snake as a dangerous and frightening creature. And all those S sounds making me hear it too. Whilst this one... Well, it, it's a quite simple and matter-of-fact statement, really. It tells us the basic details about snakes without making us feel anything particular about them. It's the kind of description you might find in a textbook or read in a newspaper. It simply gives us the facts. <laughs> Derwent's Water First and Middle School was built in 1904. The school has 22 classrooms all of which have access to computers and videos. Traditional desks are, however, still used. The canteen seats 300 children. School lunches are nutritionally balanced and provide a choice of meals, including vegetarian. There are 30 teachers on the staff and most teach a variety of subjects. 600 children attend the school. The school day begins at nine o'clock and ends at 3.30. So, those are the facts. You'd probably describe it that way if you were writing a newspaper story or a textbook description of a school. But what if you wanted to persuade people to buy the school? What kind of language might you use then? What an offer! Derwent Water First and Middle School, the latest in high-tech, low-cost, extracurricular educational ecstasy. Spacious, clean classrooms, brand new computers, superb videos, the very latest in seating and working equipment, desks and chairs. Lovely hygienic canteen, seats 300 in comfort, and about the food, what can I tell you about the food? Terrifically tasty, fairly tickles the taste buds. The teachers, what a multi-skilled bunch. They're mathematical, biological, artistic, scientific, linguistic and physically fit. Work every hour of the day if you ask them. Real class, cheap at half the price. Who'll give me £100,000? £50,000? I'm robbing myself, I tell ya. 50 quid. 5p. Oh, all right, you've twisted my arm. 5p, and I'm chucking the kids. So! A completely different way of describing a school. Very persuasive. Exaggerating all the good points and playing down all the bad. This is the kind of describing you might come across in adverts. But what if you want to communicate... the way you feel about a school? Tired of swallowing children, the school gates yawn. Woken once more from their rusty sleep by the jangling bell. Silent classrooms with sightless eyes of television and computer screens waiting to see again. Now the bell has rung. Seats like rows of blunt teeth hunger for the time when children are invited to lunch by the bell. While in another room, teachers circle each other with words and laughter, deaf to the insistent reminders of the bell calling them back to work. The empty belly of the playground briefly fills with the yell of freedom, silenced all too soon by the strict voice of the bell. In that poem, the empty seats and tables in the canteen remind the writer of rows of teeth. It really helps people imagine what you're describing if you compare it with something. A clapperboard reminds me of crocodiles' jaws. I think lion's manes look like fire because they have red and gold curves all the way around their heads. At night, when a car goes by, the shadows on the wall spin round like a record. When my dad snores, it sounds like a deafening pneumatic drill. 
When my sister cries, she reminds me of a shriveled up tomato, all red and wrinkled. When I see a dirty, used, smelly mop in the dustbin, it reminds me of my hairstyle when I get up. A plate heaped high with spaghetti, all covered with tomato sauce, is just about my favourite meal. It looks like a gigantic heap of steaming, tangled, mixed up, twizzled, twisted, wound up, woozled, worms. I like picking them up one at a time, swallowing them slowly head first until the tail flips across my cheek before finally wriggling down my throat. But best of all, when I've finished eating, I go and look in the mirror because the tomato sauce smeared around my mouth makes me look like a clown. Spaghetti for that writer is like a plate of wriggly worms. But you can go even further. You can describe something as if it really is something else. The beach is a quarter of golden fruit, a soft, ripe melon sliced to a thick green rind of jungle growth. And the sea devours it with its sharp, sharp white teeth. You can get two ways of describing for the price of one. If you use words that sound like the things they're describing. For instance, wash, whiz, and sizzle. Big bus at the bus stop. Ready to go again. Oh, big noise! <laughs> big cloud of... <clears throat> Ooh, should I? <sighs> Gasp! Ah. Ooh, gulp. Poor stench! Wretch. <coughs> Cough. <laughs> oh, stifle. Oh, sniffle. Snuffle. <gasps> Wheeze. Strangle. <coughs> Choke. <coughs> Poison. <coughs> Sneeze. You can break the rules too, like maybe joining words together. What's this? Okay, join up. Sunboiled. That's a good word for a day at the beach.
It was a sun-boiled, bright light, fried egg, hot skin, suntan, sizzler of a day. It was a pop song, ding dong, candy floss, dodge and car, space invader, beach wader, smash and seaside town. We had a swell time, a well time, a real pell-mell time, a fine time, a rhyme time, a super double dime time. We beach swam, ate ham, gobbled up a chicken leg, climbed trees, chased bees, got stuck in mud up to our knees, played chase, flew in space, beat a seagull in a skating race, rode boats, quenched throats, spent a load of five pound notes, sang songs, hummed tunes, played hide and seek in sandy dunes, did all these things, too much by far, that we fell asleep going back in the car from Folkestone. Snickles and poles, ribbles and groats. That's what I wish you. A nox in the groots, or a root in the stoots, and a gawk in the former sure too. <laughs> Keep out of sight, for fear that I might glum you a snavelly grave. And don't show your face around any place, or you'll get one flax knack in the babe. <laughs> The thing about making up words of your own is that you can say exactly what you want to. It's a bit like do-it-yourself language. When my favourite football team loses, I go, oh, grunt humpy. When my mum tells my sister to say goodnight to me, she gives me a hug a look. When I jump into a cold swimming pool, I go, oh, shiver easy. Finished football practice, I'm tired of phobia. <sighs> when I've just won one of my athletics races, I go all proud to joy defied. <sighs> when I get out of the bath, I go all wrinkly pinkly. When I get really angry, I go psycho splatomatic. <laughs> 